research paper is edited multiple times. We all do that, right? So uh, we have to move ahead in terms of not getting into quantity of research public publications that are you know publishing that's been done, but get into um, what's the impact of that research and uh, at the ground level, and uh, you know what are the kind of citation it has uh, if it's a paper. And if th these two things, when you do project work, when you do research in, in the campus, when you do when your profs publish research papers. It's about the impact on the ground, and it's about the citation that it's got itself into. And these two are things that you must focus on. With more. Absolutely, Mesh. I agree with you there, with you on those points. And uh, uh, in one of our conversations recently, you did mention uh, that you know uh, when it comes to education in India, I'm talking about education from a you know broader and general perspective. Uh, you were talking about, you were mentioning about how ethics is no longer an option. For you know, educational institutions in the country, uh, w would you care to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it, uh, Praveen, uh, see, we are looking, uh, we are moving towards a more transparent world. There is not a lie that would not be caught over a period of time, uh, because you leave traces. You know, we are living in a uh, digital world. We are living in a smarter world where the news moves faster and bad news moves much, moves much faster. And the bigger the person you are, the, the, the bigger the fall. So uh, in that kind, you know, there were days when you know you would put something in, in a paper and it'll be you know uh, uh, in an almara in, in the corner of a government office. It's no longer the case. Everything that you do uh, is uploaded somewhere. And like as I speak now, uh, if I speak anything wrong, it's uploaded somewhere, and that will come and hang me at some point in time. So as long as you understand that uh, a lie today would be caught tomorrow, and if not tomorrow, the day after, you'll not lie. And uh, more importantly, uh, like I know, uh, I'll give you a smaller, uh, rather more relevant example. Students today no longer believe institutions which who talk about 100% placement. They believe in institutions which say 85% placement, 60% placement. They're smart enough today. Especially, and I'm not talking about tier one institutions. I'm talking about the tier two institutions. So if a tier two or a tier three institution goes and says 100% placement, students would not believe it. You go and tell them that listen, I've got 65% placement. Student will at least say, "Okay, I got one in six chances, uh, you know, six in ten chances of getting into a job." And he work harder towards it. His quality improves, his performance improves, and he'll put in more hard work. So, uh, the more you are closer to the truth, the greater the chances that you'll survive. And if you are caught lying at any point in time, or if you're caught misselling or uh, or miscommunicating at some point in time, that brand hit, that you know, credibility hit for a long, long time. So it's far better telling the truth and uh, taking the consequences of it than telling a lie and falling apart at some point. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Mahesh, one more uh, question I have for you on the inclusion of, uh, you know, at MEC we have a creative sciences department. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a separate uh, department that uh, teaches students how to present their thoughts, their ideas, and how to translate their ideas into action through the art of photography, through the art of filmmaking, through the art of narration, you know, cinema, combining a lot of diverse aspects of learning like cinema, philosophy, language, literature, and hands-on, you know, uh, audio-visual uh, techniques using state-of-the-art equipment. So th this is more like an experimental thing which uh, our management, our leaders felt would uh, unleash the creative side of students. Uh, have you have you seen something similar uh, across your you know travels to various institutions in the country, or do you think it's something unique to us to MEC? So, uh, Pravin, you're making me talk good things about MEC, and I'll still uh, I think I'm bad at good things. I don't know. Please, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you don't anyway, know these things. I'm I'll, I'll stick with that. I'll actually. stick with that. Right. No, I think. Uh, uh, very few engineering colleges, like you know, uh, uh, all human beings have the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. And in India, because we are so focused on uh, getting a career and a job and, and so on and so forth, we focus so much on the right side of the brain that the left side is left alone. And at some point, you actually, you know, the growth of the left side of the brain is stunted. You look at more developed economies, uh, the, uh, the liberal arts programs are much more stronger than the, uh, the, the, than the core uh, functions. And that's largely because if you see the conflicts around in this world, the ISIS is not a conflict to do with oil. It's, it's, it's not just about oil, rather. It's to do with a cultural disparity. 
so at, cert, at certain level you need to ensure that students who are not being groomed and they are they're budding flowers in a sense right uh, uh, you know also unleash the creative uh, abilities you know understand the softer side of uh, uh, us than just the core uh, uh, education that we deal with and anything that enables the student to do that to unleash his uh, creative abilities is very very welcome especially in engineering college especially in engineering college and the infrastructure that you built up for that uh, for uh, unleashing that creative abilities of the student is is highly commendable thank you mahesh i, I know i did push you in the corner there but uh, uh, i was no, only not stating facts not at all, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all right then okay uh, we, we have about 240 students engineering students in our college and uh, we have a, a lot of uh, followers who probably you know are online right now and who would be watching this video for uh, subsequently as well and all of them without a doubt uh, without a variation would be you know want to be engineers aspiring engineers who want to make their mark and leave their mark in the country across the world as engineers what are uh, what would be your word of advice for them follow your passion uh, is and uh, you can look around your own relatives and you'll understand what the career is a successful most successful people i'm not saying that i'm successful i have a long way to go uh, but uh, i'm a chartered accountant became an investment banker you know uh, launched a few magazines which are in journalism uh, got into education uh, which, so each of them is more different from than the other and all this is largely to do with your understanding of the space than an education in the space so when you are studying the more you understand that you're being groomed as a you know well rounded personality where your career takes is is independent of what you're studying here as long as you understand that and learn and, and imbibe everything that is around you uh, you'll be a much more wiser mature and much more successful person because success doesn't mean merit success doesn't mean whether you got 98% or 95% uh, you just look around and you will realize that the most successful people are not the most meritorious students and vice versa uh, and it's uh, you know ultimately the admission into mahindra ecol has guaranteed you one thing that you're being taught in the in the right place but once you go out and get into a job in any company you and a student who come up from the worst institution in this country would be competing for the same space and in all possibility you'll lose out because he's got more hunger uh, so it it is hunger and and the will to prove a point that matters then where you come from mind right call you come in fantastic congratulations but a long way to go thanks mahesh for that and uh, uh, we have a question just now come in uh, that uh, okay i'm sure uh, you would be able to do justice to that it's on the use of technology in education nowadays we are seeing a lot of platforms and tools you know that are supporting classroom teaching and classroom instruction uh somebody wants to know so what what is your opinion on the use of technology in education do you think it is uh, more positive versus negative so oh, any technology that improves uh, 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 anything is well and so is technology education too but does it replace at at a immediate level uh, the kind of uh, uh, you know teaching that you have i think it's got a few years to go you know it's uh, in that sense but in quite a few places within education technology is, is anyway proving its mark uh, you know uh, you look at the way you would take an examination which has become much more transparent at this point in time to so how you select your college it has become because there is much you know i remember in my days you know the college can say anything and uh, the fact would be like because it's all buried in news uh, in, in papers uh, so Uh, technology has made life a lot more transparent technology has brought people that we thought were not accessible a bit more accessible uh, but it still has uh, a, a few miles to go before it reaches that uh, you know the most optimistic uh, most of op you know optimum levels thank you mahesh uh, for that and uh, i'll tell you one more thing like if you yeah. can say as an example you know insert has two Uh, in France, and the same profs, you know, uh, uh, teach both sides. Uh, one sitting in Singapore, one sitting in Paris, uh, in France, and, and that works. Now, would you, would you, uh, uh, because there is a greater engagement. It's still a 60 room, uh, 60 student classroom or 30 student classroom. 
whatever that numbers are. So the prof sitting in Paris would know the name of the student here and start interacting with him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If that is the uh, uh, so that's a good use of technology uh, where uh, they're not uh, you know making people fly on to hear the best prof from Paris uh, or the best prof from Singapore, uh, but the one-on-one -on -one connect is still maintained. And, and that's at this point in time, I, I, I think that's quite use of technology in that sense. But if you were to have someone sitting from Harvard and uh, talking to a billion students across the country uh, without knowing who is, and it's, it's a one way interaction, you know, it's a one way communication, uh, I think it will fail the objective of teaching in that. True. And uh, at MEC, we do have a lot of you know online tools, uh, the Moodle platform that has been customized to our requirement, which showcases a lot of videos, you know, tutorials that That's are recorded right. by professors and uh, students. Very good. I've them. seen those things; they're very, very good. You know, yeah. so but, uh, you know, when you learn something in, in through a book and then go and listen to the prof there, it has a greater connect than uh, any other way. True, true. Thank you, Mesh. And uh, okay, now uh, coming back. Uh, to your vast experience and your exposure to educational institutions, including engineering colleges in the country, uh, without knowing the entire spectrum of our, you know, facilities and uh, you know the granularities of our infrastructure, uh, top of the mind, recall, say, what are the five things you would recommend that every engineering college in the country should have, especially MEC? The top five things. This is a brain teaser. Diversity. Yeah, okay. yeah, I get it. I'll start with, uh, you know, uh, I think you need to improve your diversity. Uh, 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 that's the first of the thing. Uh, I've not seen your campus, so uh, I, I cannot comment on many things. Uh, but the, uh, what else? What would I say? I do, I've not seen the sports facilities, but just ensure that the student, you know, because I keep saying that education is not just about what your marks are and what your success rate is. It's, it's much more than that. So ensure that uh, the student is a bit more rounded than just being a great student right, in that sense. So he's a young boy, let him be a young boy or a young girl. <laughs> let him not be anything else. You know, I don't want him to come out as a 50-year-old more mature wise man. <laughs> right. So uh, and three, uh, I think the more you ensure that your student engages with people outside of Mahindra's uh, in terms of teaching or in terms of corporate interactions, the far better the person would be. Four, uh, ensure that the student uh, uh, are exposed to the, uh, you know, people from non-engineering backgrounds. You know, uh, you know, uh, get get a guy who's uh, made a successful mechanical shop in in Andhra and get him to talk to you, of uh, to, to students of what he did and how he's created that. He had been thirty thousand rupees. Trust me, that he started all by himself, and, and those are experiences that they will learn uh, much much better. So uh, I think. Uh, the connect with real life outside of Mahindra I because you know the campuses are very protected. You know they really protect the student to an extent where uh, he's ill exposed to the vicarious of life outside of the campus. So the more you expose him to those kind of things, the more uh, you will. Way to start work on incubators and you no, know, I saw in the whole thing that is one of the word that you use is entrepreneur. Uh, so you need to come up with. A strong, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, foundation which says that you actually promote entrepreneurship. And the the first step is incubators. So what is what are you doing on incubators? Is something that you must know. Great, Mesh. Thank you. I've uh, made a note of those points. But uh, yeah, I think we've covered a few of these already. Uh, uh, we have a new diversity uh, target for this year. We have sports facilities. In fact, we have a 130-acre campus, which you'll be seeing shortly. You've only seen 30 acres of it today. And uh, we do have cricket, uh, swimming pools, basketball courts, tennis, and all that stuff. And you'll be happy to see those. And uh, yeah, the connect with real life is something uh, that's a real possibility at MEC, because uh, MEC is also a, 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 a a brainchild of some of the leaders uh, from Tech Mahindra Foundation, who have uh, a tremendous experience in hands-on activities, come you know, pertaining to corporate social responsibility. If you know uh, Tech Mahindra, Mahindra Satyam, we were associated with 104 HMRI, 108 EMRI. We are still technology providers to 108 EMRI in the state and in other states as well. So uh, 
and the incubators or the entrepreneurship quotient that's going to be developed through hands-on projects and project works in uh, you know industries uh, Mahindra related group industries as well as others are things that would slowly yet surely take care of most of the parameters that you have uh, mentioned just now that every engineering college must have and uh, I think we've, we've come to the end of our questions for today Mahesh and if you would like to add something from your side you're most welcome otherwise we can uh, call it a day no as i said uh, you know you've got a great opportunity uh, most uh, you know all students in my rifle are privileged because they could get into a college of this quality their parents could afford uh, you know in my rifle uh, i think uh, anything less than being uh, you know uh, you know contributing to the society over a long, longer period of time you know if you remain just an engineer it's a huge disservice to this country and to the society to your parents and yourself, uh, the, your potential is far bigger than that. Aim not just for what you're going to get at Mind Rifle, but much beyond that, and uh, uh, and work towards that. Uh, and just follow, ensure that whatever you do, uh, you have the other India uh, in your mind when you're working towards that. Thank you so much. Definitely, Mahesh, and thank you so very much for your wonderful thoughts and uh, very good advice, and uh, that we will strive to, you know. Uh, use as our guidelines in our quest towards excellence and uh, yeah like I said we have, we have run out of questions for today and uh, we have already taken an hour and more an hour of your time and we look forward to a very long standing relationship with Career360 and I thank you on behalf of MEC for your support over the past one year in you know uh, enabling us to reach out to a larger audience across the country and we hope that our relationship would continue and reach to greater heights than before. Thanks a lot Mahesh for coming over to MEC today. Wonderful chatting with you. Hope to chat with you again sometime soon no matter where you are. Now we know we can hang out together with MECians. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and thanks, thanks a lot dear audience, dear MECians who have logged in today on this call. Keep your questions coming because we have more hangouts planned over the next month. Thank you and have a lovely evening. Right.